Good morning. My name is Sheila Griffin, and I have the privilege of serving as the chairman of the IMSA Board of Trustees. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, welcome to the commencement of our 25th graduating class. As a founding member of the board, I take great pride in how far we've come since our founding in 1985 and our opening in 1986. Even more important, though, is how far we will go in the future. But for now, we pause for the milestone event in our IMSA story. Today is a special day for the remarkable group of young adults, our class of 2013 and for all who have invested their academic, personal, social growth, and well-being. This includes family members and friends, faculty and staff, trustees and funders. Soon to be graduates, we are all so proud of you. This has been a remarkable year, marked by a phenomenal achievements uh, by you, our graduates. In our, your program today is a list of some institutional and student achievements of the 2012-2013 academic year. This list is by no means complete. It is only a sampling, but you can see that we have much to celebrate. The board is grateful for the commitment of IMSA faculty and staff, students and parents, alumni and educational partners, and our state and private funders for believing in IMSA's mission and supporting our work. The results of our collective commitment are significant. To the class of 2013 and all who are here today, including our trustees and our president emeritus, take a moment to take it all in, to be proud of what we have accomplished together. I now have the honor of introducing our commencement speaker, Dr. Glenn W. Max McGee, IMSA president. Dr. McGee <laughs> is recognized as a dynamic leader, speaker, and writer on various education topics. For the past six years, he has served as our IMSA president, leading execution and evolution of IMSA's 27 to 2012 strategic plan. During this time, we've made significant achievements and meaningful progress in all of our strategies, including whole person development, personalized learning, expansion of products and services, grounded imagination and inquiry, scholarship generation and knowledge transfer, innovation and entrepreneurship, and funding diversification. Dr. McGee initiated new approaches to extending IMSA's reach throughout Illinois with special emphasis on under-resourced communities and underrepresented populations. One example is the establishment of the IMSA field offices in Chicago, Metro East region, and the Rock Island region. He also cultivated partnerships with state, national, and global institutions and brought students and educators together to do research, discuss, and design solutions to some of the most challenging problems facing our world. While serving as IMSA's president, Dr. McGee also provided significant leadership in the state of Illinois on broader education issues, including as a member of the governor's P20 Council and diversifying higher education faculty in Illinois board. In his role as co-chair of the P20 Data Assessment and Accountability Committee, he played a leading role in the design, development, and unanimous legislative approval of Illinois' new school report card. Dr. McGee often speaks at national and state conferences and is a published author. Last summer at the semi-annual conference of the Educational Research and Development Institute, he received the Mike Neal Education, Educational Excellence in Leadership Award. Prior to joining us, Dr. McGee served as a former Illinois State Superintendent of Education and as a teacher, principal, and district superintendent. He also served on the board of directors of the Golden Apple Foundation, 
the Greater Books Foundation, and the Illinois Association for Gifted Children. Dr. McGee proudly touts his personal mission to make an enduring difference in the lives of all children. He credits his family with being his inspiration. He and his wife, Jan, the executive director of Associated Colleges of Illinois Center for Success in High Needs Schools, have three children, one grandson and two granddaughters, one of which is with us today. Dr. McGee has retired from running marathons, but is still a successful triathlete. As he sprints to the finish line of, oh, there she is. <laughs> as, as he sprints to the finish line of his IMSA presidency, he also looks forward to staying connected with our special community and continuing to advance IMSA's mission and legislative charges as a volunteer and donor, including helping us raise money from the private sector as a member of the IMSA Fund Board of Directors. It is my honor to introduce our 2013 commencement speaker, Dr. Max McGee. Well, thank you for that uh, introduction, and uh, thank you for your service. 28 years of service to the Illinois Mathematics and Science Academy. That deserves a hand. <laughs> Sylvester, let's get started. Like Rafiki in The Lion King, I am honored and struck by the significance of the ceremony. But truth be told, I'm a little bit conflicted. I don't know if I should hold up the class of 2013 to the larger world, to the assembled multitude, or if I should hold up the world to the class of 2013. The former has a certain appeal, for while this class is mature, mostly, <laughs> while they are definitely exceptionally intelligent, wise, and darn good looking, I worry about you. I worry about you navigating your way through the jackals, uh, dodging the stampeding water buffalo, uh, how you will cope with the disastrous droughts that will face you. I worry about you leaving IMSA and wonder what will happen as others strive to shape your identity, distill your voice, to extinguish that light of discovery, to replace inquiry with edict, and to slowly poison you with the invisible deadly vapors of mediocrity. I worry about the crushing pressures that others will bring to bear on you not to look too good, not to be too smart, not to work too hard, because then it makes them look bad. And like pedaling a bicycle, the faster you go, the force of the wind against you is exponentially greater. It slows you down, it's more resistive. And I think that you'll find that the more you excel, the pressures that face you are exponentially stronger. I worry about the water hole, because as it dries up, the animals look at one another quite a bit differently. Will you be able to compete, to survive, when everyone else around the water hole is thinking, is there enough water for me? But you are thinking, how do I assure that there's water for all? I know a little about what I'm talking about because I'm especially worried about the most repulsive force of all, and perhaps the most inexorable one. To think small, to be parochial, and to act provincial. To have ethics and morals be situational, to sit when you should stand. Fifteen years ago, the ACT was given just to students that wanted to take it because they were told they could go to college. 
as a state superintendent of schools, I said, that's not going to be the case. Because my wife and I knew of many, many students in under-resourced districts who've been told, you can't do it. You won't go to college. We'll make sure you get a, a job, or we'll try to make sure you get a job when you get out. And we knew there were smart kids that ought to be able to take the ACT. So I convinced the legislature, and behind the, the leadership of uh, Mary Lou Kalashaw, whose granddaughter is a sophomore here, and, and others, we were able to have every student in Illinois take an ACT test. And I began hearing from principals and superintendents, how could you do that? Our scores will drop if everybody has to take this test. I was disinvited to speak at events. And at one reception, a uh, superintendent, and a lot of these guys were big old PE teachers, uh, came up right in my face and said, my kids can't even fill in the dots on the ACT. And my response to him was, well, what are you teaching them? It could have ended badly, but my five foot two inch wife intervened. <laughs> the first administration of the universal ACT in the country showed that more than 8,000 students who had been told they couldn't do it, couldn't excel, were trapped by provincial forces, had scores of 18, 20, 22, 24, and choices opened up for them. Ten states have followed the lead of Illinois. And so in these defining moments, class of 2013, when you face these pressures, don't sit, stand. Stay true to your heart and to your ethics. You know so much, but do you know enough? So let's turn to the second scenario for a moment. Presenting the Earth, our planet, to you. On one hand, it has unimaginable peril, and on the other hand, unlimited potential. There are devastating deficits of food, water, and schooling. Deforestation and disasters, man-made and natural. The destitution of poverty to the destruction of racism. The denial of science. The science of climate change, of vaccination, of advanced medicine. But on the other hand, our planet has three things going for it. The irrepressible human spirit, a history of successful innovation and adaptation, and the creative, ethical, scientific minds of the class of 2013. So it is a difficult choice to present you or present to you. But before it is made, a few words about the last acronym, which, believe it or not, will connect these two scenarios. And I hope remind you of our belief statement that the ability to discern and create connections is truly the essence of understanding. Class of 2013, your education has involved plenty of acronyms. MI, two, three, and four. MSI, COTH, SIR, CAB, ACT, SAT, SSL, MAD, EBE, LOO, BTW, and even acronym. <laughs> wow. And there's probably plenty more acronyms that I don't know and just as soon would not know. <laughs> now, acronyms may be very handy for memorizing and kind of amusing, uh, but I have to confess, I find them uh, sometimes uh, more than a bit disturbing. At best, they can be a distraction. In fact, I remember, and must confess, my graduation from dear old uh, LTHS, my high school, which I love dearly, uh, though we had 1,200 graduates in our class. So it was a long ceremony, so I had a lot of time and thought of all the different acronyms for LTHS, most of which were terribly inappropriate. <laughs> but uh, on a more serious note, uh, acronyms can shortchange meaning. We did not begin this ceremony with a POA. Abraham Lincoln did not deliver the GA. Tonight, before the Blackhawks game, they will not sing the SSB. Your CAC and RCs are people. A student inquiry and research project titled The Effect of Xanthone, Artis, oh my goodness, Artis Visa Epsinium Extract, and 6-O Angeloplenilin on the apoptosis rates of human epithelial breast adenocarcinoma cells, and that was one of your research projects, 
deserves more than the acronym SIR. But acronyms can have a long-term uh, damaging and pernicious effect. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson were not POTUS. Yet we refer to our president as POTUS. Martin Luther King Jr. has become a monogram too often, MLK. And even worse, the words of Martin Luther King Jr., one of the men I most admire, have been paraphrased, the paraphrasing being acronyms Big Brother. As you're in Washington, D.C., and look at the Lincoln Memorial, just to the left is, is the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. And King emerges from a giant rock. And literally carved in stone on the side of the rock was this quote. I was a drum major for justice, peace, and righteousness. Those are not his words. That's a paraphrase. That's an extended acronym of the sermon he gave two months before his assassination. If you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness, and all of the other things shall not matter. They're taking off the paraphrase and putting on those words. So as you leave the Illinois Mathematics and Science Academy, take more than acronyms. Take the friendships forged in deep and meaningful conversations. Take the power of collaborative learning. Take the wonder of discovery. Take the resilience of learning from mistakes. Take your heart to stand for what you believe. And also, take my advice. I can't resist. <laughs> Please don't let yourself become an acronym, a monogram, a paraphrase. Remember, if you grab that microphone, if you don't have a seat at the table, you're probably on the menu. <laughs> Recognize those defining moments and have the courage to act. Our belief statement says, our first belief statement says, no one's path in life is predetermined, especially yours. Create paths where there were none and make each day an excellent adventure. I'm not sure what your last acronym will be. I know what it will not be. It will not be A-T-H-C. Because remember that we, the class of 2013, 189 seniors and one senior citizen, have a mission that matters. So one more time, please. Let's fill this hall at our commencement as we commit for this final time, make the rafters ring, that with our creative, ethical, scientific minds, we will advance the human condition. Good job. <laughs>And so, with the uh, strength, power, and energy of your minds in our mission, I think there really is one and only one way to conclude. Uh, as Rafiki, I don't need to hold you up and present you to the world. The fact is, as a class of 2013, you have the intelligence, the resilience to stave off the jackals, to dodge the stampedes, to fill the water holes. You have the strength of character to resist those pressures, to be mediocre, to defy becoming an adequate acronym, to repel those who would restrict your choices and define your identity. So to our 25th graduating class, the spectacular class of 2013, as your president, who uh, really loves you more than <laughs> words can express, uh, Sylvester, one more time. <laughs> I'm going to present this infant planet to you. The seven billion people are entrusting their future to you. Nurture it, improve it, transform it. Imagine, innovate, and invent solutions to our problems, 
to our perils. Seek out excellent adventures that serve humanity. Sit when you are tired, but when you stand, stand for a cause that will make an enduring difference. So this, may this class, our class, the, our class, the 25th graduating class of the Illinois Mathematics and Science Academy become the hub of a network with a depth, the breadth, the horizons and height to span the globe. And along with your diplomas and medallions, take the memory of our Earth on this graduation day as your reminder to make each and every day an opportunity to do nothing less than advance the human condition. Thank you. Thank you.